Hello my friends, welcome back to the bench. Today we're going to be testing the Badger Sotar 2020 Airbrush. Um, I've had this for a while, but I wanted to test it to make sure it was kind of back in stock. Some of these Badgers coming in out of stock, they were out for a while, but I noticed they're back in stock now at a pretty good price. And uh, so for that, I want to show you this airbrush. Now this is a specialty airbrush to me. Um, it can be a jack of all trades, but it's a detail airbrush. It's for getting in the little spots, little details. Uh, good for uh, pre-shading and whatnot. I'll show you how fine it can get. Um, my friend uses one and he, he paints miniatures. This is the closest I have to a miniature. And he will actually get in using this Sotar and get little shadings just right. And he says it, it's really good. Now there's other detail airbrushes out there. And uh, even small needles, this is a point .2. Um, the H is actually heavy. This is a point .7. That's what it came with, but I converted it to a fine, which is a point .2 millimeter. And um, but the the thing is with this is it's around a hundred bucks. And uh, the other detail brush he has is a four hundred or a five hundred dollar Iwata Micron, I think it is. And there's a custom one from uh, GSI Creos, which is about two twenty five to three hundred, depending on where you get that. So at a hundred bucks to do something comparable to those, it's a big deal. And uh, for that, oops, I wanted to test it for you guys. Um, I did convert it, and I'll show you what I mean. Let's show you the airbrush first. This is how it comes. It has an Allen wrench right here. And that is for the back for adjusting, which I don't really use, but I'll show you what I mean. There is the brush itself. It's black, which is quite unique gold printing on it. It's got the cutout. Same type of needle with the ball in the end as the Patriot. It's got a protector in the front but it's fully open so you can leave it on and go in close for detailing. It uses a non-washer fitting system so the fittings are the way it was custom designed is it doesn't require fittings so it's uh, completely resistant of course to uh, all paints. There's no uh, fittings to wear out or anything. It's got a cap on the top. Now it's got a smaller cup because it is made for details but they made it wider. See it's a wide cup so it's not tremendously tiny but you're not going to get a cup of this size. But the amount of paint you're pushing out when you're detailing that's all you really need. It's got a nice open bottom. Let me see if I can get some lay on it. and there, there it is. See it? Really easy to clean. You get your let me see. Hold on, guys. Grab my gun cleaning cube tips here. That's it. And you can get right in here and clean it out without having to take the needle out. Really easy to clean. Now, the back is a stopper, and it's numbered. Let me see if I can get it. See it? Three. I have it set for three. You can go to four. That is the stopper, which is right here. Ready? Watch this. See it? And it just hits it to stop it. Now, you can come way in, which is, I got to a two here. And you stop, and yet way you'll if you pull her back, you're always going to get like a nice pencil line, which is uh, what I'm going to show you guys, which is primarily what I would use this for. And uh, here's where you have the Allen wrench if you need to take it out, and uh, you can adjust it. I haven't had to, and I haven't had to remove it because to remove the needle, you're just going to loosen up traditionally, come right out. So, and uh, to change it, no wrench is required for the front, and I'll show you. What I mean by changing the needle and nozzle, this is what I did have. I purchased the fine conversion set, which is in here now. In here is the one that I had, the heavy. Now, uh, when I put up a link, the fine is available. You can buy it now with the F, the fine. And that's the one I recommend because that's what this airbrush is for. Now, you can buy a larger needle. Mine initially came with this um, 0.7. So, the black is the fine. It's a 0.2 millimeter needle. The I think it's silver on the end is a 0.5 millimeter, and this is clear on the end. And this is the 0.7. I don't know why you would put a 0.7 in a detail airbrush, but maybe you need big details. I I don't know, but uh, I did like it. I was using it when I first got it, but I knew I wanted it for the fine, and I quickly converted it, and uh, I've left it there since. Here's the complete nozzle setup. So it comes again with its own protective front. There is the main cap and there is, let me get up here, there's the nozzle. And that is not screwing, that just pops right in. 
It's a miniature version of the bigger uh, traditional one you would get on your Badger uh, Patriot 105. So that is pretty cool. Now, where did I get the little cup? Let's get these over here. I'm going to put these in a cup, guys. Hold on. Let me reach across here. Your Kirito over here. There we go. So I think I will convert that. Um, at the end of the video, we'll show you how easy that actually is. So, anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how kind of fine lines we can get. Maybe I'll do some pre-shading. I'll, I'll, I'll come in close on a couple of pieces, but we're going to get on a piece of paper, and I'm going to show you how detailed and close you can get. It's very comfortable. It's got this black guard on it here. holds the finger back. It's really easy to pull back. Um, I purchased this. This is a quick release by Badger. It fits all of theirs. You see the Badger has their own fitting size. I also have the converter for any airbrush hose. But I, for this, I just, says I, I just threw it in the cart and bought one. And there it is. And it's made. Now it fits in any quick release. You know, which is what I have already set up. Um, for the test, I'm going to. Reaching across. I'm going to use all, cl all clad gloss black base. And I just want to show you the black. You know, for shading and whatnot. Um. Primarily, that's what I use it for. I think that's what you guys should use it for. You can use it for anything you want. But uh, for this video, primarily, we're going to go with black. And uh, we'll show you how fine lines we can get it and uh, how to use the airbrush. And uh, and that's it. This is already pre thinned so we're going to pour some in, head over to the booth, and um, let me show you this. Now, I'm going to use my 2D air compressor for this, and I have it set for 15 PSI. You can go way down in your air pressure with this and come in dead close. And, which is pretty impressive because it's still going to push a quality piece of uh, a quality line. You're going to get some quality line work at such a low air pressure, and that's where this airbrush comes into play. So let me show you what I mean. Let's head over to the booth and uh, let's show you this thing. All right, guys, here we are at the booth. I loaded it up with some all clad gloss black base. And here we go. We're going to show you how fine this can get. Now I'm going to freehand it here for a second. Check that out. Pencil line baby. Hairline they call it. Now I just freehanded it but I can put the stopper if you want the same line all the time. Alright what we're going to do is crank her in. all the way in. Now I can't go back any further than what I have it set for. Let's see where we have it for. Now it'll be the same line every time. No overspray. I mean it's a thing of beauty. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, Let's see if we can start this and come in with it. And I mean, I am dead close. Can you see how close I am? I'm touching the paper. Look at that. So, this is the beauty of this airbrush. Now, if you're going to say uh, you want to pre shade, all right, you get a piece like this, and you can see the line, right, going across here. Now, Appreciating is not exact. You don't have to go nuts. You can just get close and just come in. And if for me, it's tough because I'm all, I'm, all, I'm behind the camera here. You know, it's really hard for me to do this. Let me see. Hold on. You actually want to get a little sloppy with it. You can hit your edges. Like that. Now with this, we're going to fill in this little circle. I can even jack the uh, air pressure down a little even more. So we are barely pushing some air. Here we go. It's 
tough because I got the camera's in front of my face, so it's it's tough for me to get this just right. But I'm gonna try. Check that out. See that? Now the first one I got a little sloppy on because I'm trying to <laughs> I'm trying to hold. Once I get adjusted with this camera the way I have it, I can get it down. Look at that. We just filled in that. And I have this down at like 10 PSI. Not many can do that. Not many are going to push paint out. And look, it's barely pushed any paint at all. It's still full. So, uh, like I said, we're going to jack this thing down. We have it adjusted if you want to adjust it. I can freehand it if I'm not behind this damn camera. But here we go. Let's try this. Beautiful. Now when I go to paint over that white, I'll do most of it white, and then just a little bit of the shadow will remain. We can fill in this little seat right here. But um, let's just go along the runner, which is great practice. This is how I started doing this. I started spraying the runners and getting good at it. But uh, you can actually cut in half, let's see, if you're trying to spray something down the middle. You get your dividing line. I get this really good when I don't have the camera in front of me, you know. And you can divide stuff in half. Um, I did that earlier. But... To get in close and to fill in little gaps like this is really, really wonderful. I'm going to start on the cardboard. And here we go. See, I'm actually touching the cardboard. So, any artist out there, any true artist, I'm not. I just build models, you know. You can really really utilize this airbrush you know for a little feathering work it really is a, a, a wonderful wonderful airbrush for uh, detailing and line work and I highly recommend it it will come in handy you know I like to use certain things as my guideline when I get you know better at it I usually will take the, the hose and sling it back over me so it's not dragging and then obviously I won't have the camera in front of my face and then uh, you can really get the, the line work down really good but um, yeah I mean you do a little my friend like does little dots on his like the creature will have a buckle that he's working on and it'll it'll, it'll come in and get let me show you a little little leopard dots you know little like pencil dots and he can do it really really good once you get you know you can adjust this if you want really back it in but uh, you know if you don't have the camera in front of you you can really break break this thing down really well and uh, with the bigger nozzle you know you're gonna you can go in and you know base if you want you know this I'll have to open this up just see if we can get some basing out of this just to show you how it pushes the paint out See it? So you're going to cover a whole area anyway. Look at that. So, let's do the whole bottom of the foot. Let's go ahead and finish that. Look at that. And this is a point, too. So you can, if you want, even if you're just starting out, I mean, it's going to take a little more paint. And look what I did. I did the top, but not much hit the bottom. That's it. Because it stays within its area. So now that is sprayed, but that part isn't. So, uh, a terrific, terrific airbrush. Um, it cleans out easy. You just flush some through, do a little back flush, and it comes out dead clean. Really clean, really well. Anyway, guys, let's go over this at the end and wrap this up. We'll see you at the bench. 
Hey guys, before we get back to the bench, I still have some paint in here. I want to show you what we can do with it wide open. So uh, what I did was I turned up the air pressure to almost 20 PSI. I cranked this back out so we can open it wide open. I show you an example here, but I'll show it to you in real time. And uh, check this out. See? So, I mean, you can do it. Not the biggest cup in the world. But uh, it, it it'll do both. Let's uh, yeah, let's paint a, a spoon with this uh, gloss black base, which I use quite a bit. All right, already got the base down. First coat, rather. And very efficient. You know, it really atomizes the paint really well. See that? So it will get the job done. Uh, I outlined this rudder piece, which I would spray over, and you would have all them panel lines right there. Let's paint this whole piece black right here. Beautiful. Look at that. Flip her over. Here it is. So, really terrific airbrush. Light, too which is good for what we're doing here. Yeah, now I got most of it out. Now I will clean this out and meet you back at the bench. All right, guys, here we are at the bench. I was going to try, I don't know if I can, look, we can do this on camera too well, to show you how to change the needle. All right, so let's go ahead and pull the needle out. Came out nice and clean. Look at that, I didn't even wipe the needle yet, and it's perfect. It cleans out really easy. Look, let's see if I can show you. How clean it got. All right, uh, where are we gonna go here? All right, we're gonna take off this front cap. Actually, you can leave them together. Now that I think about it. It let me know that these two go together. Okay, we're gonna take off the front. And there it is, the little, let me show you the little, the little needle in the front there. There it is. Make sure you guys have a bench that can catch this stuff. There it is, look at that, 0.2 right there. So, let's get a cup for that also. There we go. And that's it, so it's there's no really uh, special wrench. As I said, you could tell this needle's already larger than that one. Yeah. And this just pops in. I believe you can go either way. You can pop it into the cap or you can just lay it in here. Let's try and lay it in here. Bear with me, guys. This is really tough to do behind the camera. There it is. Hanging up. All right. Hold on. Hold on. I'm losing it. Hold on, guys. I need to get this closer to me. One second. All right, guys. I had to get a little closer to my face so I could see what I was doing. Here it is. All right. The cap is in. Check this out. That main one is on top. Hold on. Let me get up here to show you guys. And now you have a choice of two. It's easy to see which one fits it because let me show you the difference. Look at this. Look at the opening difference in the two. Look at that. Look how much bigger this one is. So you can go with the the traditional one that I had was showing you. Right? Or it comes with this flat cap. See it? It comes with this dome cap too. And that's it. Let me go with the traditional one that I was using. Alright, now we are ready to go. Make sure your trigger is in. There we go. And that's it. I changed it. Now we have uh, the black one on the end. Yep, I put the same needle back. Hey. All right, bear with me, guys. Real time here. We're doing this in real time. <laughs> I 
I knew something was wrong. There we go. Now we're in. That was that. It was that easy. And that's it. Now you have a uh, clear in the end, which is a 0.7. And uh, it's going to push a lot of paint. So uh, it is a, truly a jack of all trades. Make sure we keep all these pieces together. There we go. And that's it. That is a wonderful airbrush that I highly recommend for detail work. And uh, oh, let me get the results. There we go. Here's the half spoon I did. I was uh, getting ready. Look at that. Just cut right in half. Nice smooth surface. Here is our pencil lines. No overspray at all. Here's the, when I got close with the point two. You know, and here's some pre-shading. Now what you do is you spray this, whatever color is going to go over it, white. And uh, the detailing comes up beautiful, like it's, uh, you know, it's all shaded. I sprayed these pieces. Look at how good it sprayed that. Look at that. I did my outlines here. Now when I go over it with a gray, you cover almost all of it. You just see a little bit of black coming through for shading for the panels. Look at this. Look at that. So... A terrific airbrush um, that comes highly recommended. I think it's 110 for the fine needle, the one that I did the whole test with. It'll say F on it, I believe. And um, it's 125. You ready for this? 125 for all three needles included. All three included, a buck 25. And uh, that's a bargain. Because uh, I, I, when I got mine, I, I couldn't find that offer, and I wanted the other needle. And... Uh, with shipping, you know, you're in the 20 bucks maybe for one needle and the nozzle set up. To have all three in the box at a buck and a quarter is good. Um, but if you just want it for fine detailing, just stick with the F model. And I will put a link below for both. Um, and I have two sources for them. So it uh, depends if you want to go to Amazon, if you want to go to Spray Gunner. You know, choose your, choose your retailer who you want to work with. And uh, that is it. That's all, guys. I wanted to show you this airbrush quick because it is back in stock. Also, uh, my $40 test airbrush where the cups didn't fit. My new cups came in. I'm sure you saw my little other post the other day. But uh, all I did was request them, and I had them in less than a week. So uh, that uh, thumbs up to them. And some of you guys had the model where it fitted anyway, so it didn't matter. But uh, it is good to know the customer service is that good with that uh, small company. I really appreciate good customer service. I really do. And um, anyway, that is it, guys. We will see you in the next video. I have a bunch of paint coming in and a, a bunch of new tests coming up. I got a, well, I'll let you know. I'll let you guys know. I got a bunch of new lineups of paints coming. And uh, I think I'm working on right now, I don't want to let you guys know anything, another addition to my paint line. And I'll clue you in on that in the weeks to come. Pretty excited here. Anyway, guys, have a good rest of your week. I'll see you in a couple of days with another test of uh, a paint. And um, you'll be glad when you see it. All right, guys, have a wonderful day. We'll see you in the next video.